Hi, my name is Sean Lowe, and I'm here to talk to you about the four P's of creative business. The four P's are passion, philosophy, platform, and process. The four P's to me represent critical elements of success for your event business. And every single event business is a creative business. And what I'd like to do today is to start, let's start very up high and talk about what each element represents in the global scale. And then what we'll work towards is to talk about each element in detail and how you can implement them into your event business. And so let's begin. The first element is passion. It's the easiest one to talk about. What gets you out of bed in the morning? What fuels you into, into what it is that you want to do? Whether you're a florist, whether you're a planner, whether you are an, a photographer, each one is, has to come from your belly. You are an artist. An artist is what translates into everything that you do. But being an artist is not enough. There are a lot of artists out there. There are a lot of photographers. There are a lot of planners. There are a lot of people who are deeply passionate about what they do. That's just not enough. What you need to have is a philosophy. Philosophy matters because if you don't have a philosophy behind your art, then what you're sharing is just simply out into the universe of, I love to take pictures, or I love to do planning. And that's just not enough. You have to have something to stand behind. And that is, what do you want to share with the world? And once you have that philosophy, you can use that to create your platform. And once you have a platform, that platform can take you anywhere. 40 years ago, nobody would ever think that a black man could become president of the United States. People would have laughed you out of the universe. And then along came Martin Luther King and all that he did for our world. And then after Martin Luther King set the stage for what President Obama can do for our country today. So we're going to talk a lot more about process later on. But what I'd like to do is tell a fun story and tell a fun story about the man you see on the screen today. Don't know who he is? It's Dick Fosbury. Dick Fosbury won the 1968 Olympics for the high jump. He set a world Olympic record. So why is that important? How does that matter to process? Well, let me tell you. Before, let's call it 1962, this is how people did the high jump. They would land on wood chips, as you see, which was pretty hard, and they would kick their legs over the bar. Pretty remarkable, pretty hard, um, but people did it, and were pretty successful at it. Well, Dick came along and said, well, I can't really do it that way. So what he said was, well, let me try and do something different. Technology changed. Instead of being able to land on wood chips, more and more colleges and more and more high schools were creating this soft, soft place to land. We weren't up to the air foam that people land on today, but there was foam and there were layers of foam and there was lots of soft cushion and it was three feet off the ground. So Dick Fosbury looked and he said, I can do this another way. He was only 16 when he was thinking of this, by the way. And so he said, I can try to do this another way. And why don't I throw my back over the bar instead of try to scissor my legs over? And so he started at 16 as a sophomore in high school. And he started, and you think the first time he did it, he probably wasn't very good. In fact, the people who saw him trying in the sophomore year of high school said he looked more like a guy having a convulsion over a bar more than a high jumper. But by his junior year, it started to catch on. And in fact, so much so that by the time he was, eh, let's call it 17, 18 in 1964, people started to notice. And so he won the Olympics in 1968. He set a world Olympic record. Pretty remarkable. And what's even more remarkable about this story is that in 1993, Javier Sotomayor set the world high jump record, and it has never been broken. He used the Fosbury flop. It is simply a better way to do things. And so that's the important part about process, is that if you can imagine the technology that's out there, and you can say, I can do it my own way, I can change the world. And Dick Fosbury changed the world. And so the other thing to note about Dick Fosbury, he wasn't the best. He invented it, and he was the best at the moment, but he simply wasn't the best. So somebody will come along and take your process and take it further, and that's OK but it's still the best process and it still is the right way for you. But the thing to know is that to have, if you didn't have the daring to change the world, you might be the best person doing the scissor kick and then you get your ass kicked every time by the person that was doing the Fosbury flop.